Lindsay, have you noticed um, uh, the sultry baritone I've been developing? Yeah, is this from your uh, battle against the 10 year olds at that hotel you stayed in? Oh, I wasn't, honestly, man, I wasn't gonna talk about it, <laughs> but <laughs> you just let the fucking lion out of his cage, oh, and boy. now I might have to talk about it. Well, so, uh, okay. You missed so, an episode, you were traveling, this is what happens. Yes. It's been a while. It's been a while since I've got to I've got to tell a, a, a birds was traveling story. <laughs> Anyways, I was uh, staying in a town at a hotel where that hotel happened to be the main hotel for that city's uh, hosting of the state high school basketball championship. And wow. you know what? Okay, good, good for those basketball kids. Good for them. However. They were all staying at this hotel, not just the kids, but the, the families, like the extended families. Sports families so, suck. I mean, it's, it's you know, you got to travel. It's a commitment. You, you put a lot into it. Like, I, my, my sister, like, traveled all over for soccer growing up, and I just ignored yeah. all of it. Um, <laughs> but here's the thing. You're just in a hotel that's packed full of that many people. And like a good 30 to 40% of them are teenage boys. And look, man, you were a teenage boy. I was a teenage boy. It's, it feels like it made more sense at the time to be like that than it does now looking at it. But yeah, yeah just the like, wouldn't it be funny if in the middle of the night at this hotel, we just like leaned over the balcony and yelled things and then giggled <laughs> uh, and ran away like little babies. Um, but man, the thing that will that will just I will never come back from. I swear, I walked by a hot tub in the middle of the day, <laughs> mind you. This was like ten in the morning. Okay, walk by the hotel hot tub, and in that hot tub are two adults. Sure, fine with me so far. Uh, and then, no joke, I'm not exaggerating. This number does not change each time I tell it. Eight kids, <laughs> like like ranging from maybe eight on the high end to two or three on the low end. I swear one of them was wearing a swim diaper. They're just like, what? What, what do kids, I, kids don't sit in hot tubs. What I hated hot tubs when I was little. I was like, this sucks. <laughs> Why do I want to do this? Yeah, exactly. Right. You swim, you jump in the pool, you like run around and they tell you to stop running. And um, those kids were just like hung out in the hot tub. <laughs> fits in away like old men. And the, <laughs> I, I also walked by like two hours later when it all cleared out and like the water was just the color of milk and it, was, it, it was, it was just ruined. It was the, just ruined. The color and, of milk. <laughs> yeah. Right. You, you know, the old color of water <laughs> that it's not supposed to have. Uh, yes. Oh man. So, um, but yeah, it was a good week. You know, I talked all week and then, um, we went out last night and, uh, that was fun. Yeah. I went to an art show. It's cool, cool. man. This artist, she did this like she would compose screenshots on her computer, and that'd be the first step, and then uh, like painstakingly transcribe them with watercolor into perfect recreations. And it was just so compelling. So is, like, hmm. There, well, there's that's the thing is you you see like when you can see someone's screen, not like in the middle of the day, like it's it's a candid almost. You can tell so much about them, like not only what tabs they have open, but just, you know, when they've got iMessage opened up in the last message from everyone they've talked to, um, the fact that it's uh, 2.30 in the afternoon and their battery life is 11%, like it it tells a story. And then the, just the technique of it. It was cool, man. I've um, decided that if there's a person who lets their phone die during an evening event, like when it's still not close to midnight... I can't trust them. I agree. My friend was telling me about a guy. Well, I don't, irrelevant how this came up, but the, the idea was that someone's phone died in the middle of like uh, an after work party. And I'm like, no, that person is too unstable to be trusted. They cannot care for themselves. Stay far mm -hmm. away. I think even one year ago, the rules would have been different because like, you know, we're all still learning how to fit smartphones into our life. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, if you don't have the battery pack, just ready to go, just in case. If you don't have a second charger. My phone charges in four different places throughout the day, pretty regularly. Four <laughs> different places. I was listening to somebody talk uh, on the radio about how she gave up tech, but before that she said, yeah, every night, like, I would just be on then my phone. Then how is she until talking on the radio? 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> good point. Good point. Good point. Um, well, no, she just described lying in bed at night and being on her phone until the battery died, which uh, is crazy. That's because wild. <laughs> bed is where you're. Char- okay. Okay. Yeah. And uh, also like, we- I don't want the feeling of like, well, I know my phone just died and I really want to go to sleep. I need it to be alive before I can close my eyes to know that it's going to wake me up. It, like, I'm just, just going to throw it on the charger and wake up when I wake up. It's insane. If you, if you don't have um, an outlet and a charger by your bed, that's fine. It means your room is wrong. <laughs> yeah, burn your room down and start over. Move just, your bed. Or just rotate your bed it around. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Okay. Unbelievable. Welcome to Crucible Radio B&B. For uh, Birds and Bones, even though Birds oh. thought he was Swain for a second. Swain's not here. <laughs> yeah. I knew you were Bones. Yes. You got get, that part I get part points right. for that. I get it's wild that. you confused yourself <laughs> and not the person you were talking to. That's like projection or something. <laughs> I don't know. You just want to be Swain. We all kind of know that. Everyone yeah, everyone right. kind of who, wants to be Swain. kind of doesn't. Like, I don't want the bad parts of being Swain. Like, when he has to work 12 hours every day for yeah, a and week. Be and exhausted on the weekends. And podcast. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, the part where he is cool. Uh, I, I want that part. I like that part. Right. Well, we're going to talk about Destiny. Cool. The whole time. <sighs> Would it be <laughs> Big fair sigh. to say that? Well, it's just, I mean... It would be fair to say that, like, it's not a, so what have been up to in Destiny? It's like, yeah, you know, we kind of took a little break coming back to Destiny. Is yeah. that accurate? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's for sure. I, I'm trying to think of the time I played Destiny, like, before this season. And, um, you know, I, I did, like, a, a little bit of Crimson Doubles with our pal Moon Vault because uh, doubles is really fun. <laughs> fun Even fun. though there was, like, not much. I got the bow. There was that special bow. I was like, yeah, I can knock that out in an hour. Yeah, that's the one to get. Um. But, you know, like I wasn't going to grind out comp and yeah, it was kind of nice. And plus Apex came out. And so it was a, it was a good moment to just like play something that was new and exciting and uh, work on some different skills. You've been, well, you've been, we've been really enjoying the, the Apex and it's a shooter with a different feel, but you just kind of spend your time in a shooter and then you go to a different one. It's, it's a bit of a shock to the system. After having played so much Apex and coming back to Destiny, anything that, I mean, it, it, on one hand, it feels comfortable like, oh, right, you know, back in the saddle, I know this, mm-hmm. but any any adjustments coming back to it? Uh, yeah, I think like, <laughs> weirdly enough, I was a little bit uh, slower in the like multi-kill sort of thing. Like those Apex engagements are pretty long and I think it, if anything, it trains you a little bit of staring and following it. You're tracking one target where in destiny, you kind of need to track it for half a second and then give up if it disappears Mm -hmm. and then find a new target. Uh, But I actually had messed with my DPI for apex and I played a couple times destiny at like a 400 with a three sensitivity in game. And I was like, I can't do it. Like it worked at range really, really well, which is, you know, kind of important in apex especially with full auto guns. Uh, But I couldn't shotgun and was just missing some up close shots. So I went back to the 800 with a, no, sorry, it was 400 and a six in destiny. And now I'm back to 800 and a three. And I switched that in the middle of a comp grind last night. And it was like, Ooh, this feels right. And that felt it was, it, that was the, uh, Oh, back in the saddle feeling once I was back on my good settings. And now I just have to figure out how to do that on my mouse each time I play apex and, destiny well your mouse has got a bunch of buttons on it i'm sure there's like a switch that button yeah well i got the profiles but the dpi button which i think is the button on the mouse that switches i use that for my class ability and for my uh tactical ability in apex so i can't use it so i'm just opening the program and manually doing it each time but i'll i'll figure it out i'm a smart guy well, and, and yeah, I guess, I guess that is the one thing that, uh, if you've got a need for like that close quarters engagement, like getting up in people's faces and spinning around real quickly with a shotgun while sliding. Um, yeah, it's a destiny thing. Yeah. That, and, uh, and like, that ain't apex. I think you can play at a distance a little bit more reliably in destiny if you've got the shot for it and if you've got the positioning and i think apex taught me that but i realized like all of my loadout choices and my style in destiny is really cqc 
And it's kind of funny that I wasn't immediately into that in Apex, but like my Titan build, my, you know, reliance on the melee health regens with Sentinel, uh, you know, all that sort of thing. Like I was like, okay, I'm great at range, but when it calls for, for getting across the map really fast and pushing, uh, I needed, I needed to look a little left and right a little faster. So it's funny how it kind of pulled yep. me right back to that CQC style. Yep. Well, let's, let's get into it. I mean, I'm going to be honest here. Uh, I have not played destiny in a minute. I've not just played a ton of computer games in general in a minute. Mrs. And I are into like this, this, this phone game we really like <laughs> right now. Um, okay. War of omens is so good. I think it's like better than hearthstone. It's uh it's really, it's really brought us closer together. But like that's a different thing. I just yeah, I haven't had that window recently where it's like, okay, tonight I want to sit in front of my PC and load up a shooter. And I've kind of been out of the loop a little bit. And there have been some there have been some changes, right? This is start of the season. And so um I mean you, you you're back in, right? You can fill me in on some of the stuff, right? Yeah, I've played mostly Destiny this week, in part because it's just new stuff. Uh the funny thing is, like, it's tough to do the new things. The new season means there is actually mm. not that much to do, but a lot of work to be done to do the things that's there, if that makes sense. So today, actually. I mean, is this just like gating things behind light level? The the power level and the content trip, definitely. And, uh, you know, I have my feelings on that. We can get to. But uh, I today, I was like, all right, let me just figure out the stuff. Cause the first day I did the gambit prime, I did a level of reckoning, got one of the new guns. It's like, yeah, sounds good. I'm like loosely understanding the gameplay loop today. I was like, what do I need to do? What do I need to work on? Let me actually grind out some stuff. And, uh, you know, it's like, it's clear you, there's this play gambit prime, do the reckoning, go back to drifter, get more stuff, play more gambit kind of thing, uh, or, or otherwise grind comp, like it, it was all there, but, uh, it, it definitely was hard to just find a fast way through that. And my power levels at like, I don't know, six fifty four. So the new reckoning tier two that came out, uh, is just still beyond my, beyond my reach at the moment. Oh, so man. it's like, you, you just get you cut know. off immediately. That really makes it hard for me to say I'm gonna ah that sounds really cool I'm gonna because it's just I am not at 654 right now right and so there's those those powerful bounties were supposed to pull people who fell back uh, and up they do. to nice and big I saw yeah. I thought really and this is all my poor reading this is my fault so I'm not it's not a criticism of what they are but when they were announced in that Vidoc I thought it was like we're going to give you some powerful gear so that you're almost done with your light grind but the loadout stuff will be later like I thought it was going to jump me up almost to 700 and then I realized it's just jumping you up to 640 if you didn't do that already so I'm like, okay, so nothing really has changed with the power level grind, unfortunately. I guess it's just a, a different strokes thing. I mean, like there's a large section of Destiny players and our listener base who just stayed up on it. And so mm -hmm. that that exists, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't even exist for them, right? They just hop in and they play the new thing. Um, and then there's folks where it's, you know, what, what do they call it? Like just sort of the the lifestyle hobby of destiny, right? Like they're committed, they're willing to put the hours in. And so, okay, you know, I gotta, I gotta get my engrams, whatever, get it, get it to that point. I'll do it. So, yeah, it's no big deal. But I think for me, that's, it's such a, it's just a tough choice to have to say, Ooh, that looks fun. I want to, I want to do that. But I, I literally can't get there in a week. I would yeah. have to put in like 10 hours this week, just getting all my engrams doing all the content I've done before and then another week after that and then maybe I could play it that's just I don't know yeah, I hope well, that evolves a bit yeah yeah you can do the base level you can play Gambit Prime you can play the first level of Reckoning pretty much right off the bat and I think that's the smart move because when it was sure, the first uh good. the first forge you couldn't even do like that sucked for players so yeah. now it's like yes, Gambit it Prime is all yours go for it um but yes, the the extended stuff and the real grind, like how you're going to actually acquire that new stuff, 
uh, that'll go a little bit slower if you're not also putting in time to to boost your light level. But, you know, I'm kind of even at the point myself where, and I have been for a while, this is not even new, where I like to just get on Destiny, play what I like, and if I get to max light uh, maybe half as fast, that's fine. You know, like, I'll get there. I am one of the players that gets there within a month or two. But I'm not going to be the player that gets there the first week by a long shot because I don't want to go to the Dreaming City to do two powerful engrams. That does not sound fun to me, and I don't really want to run don't you know the heroic chart story that shows missions. That those Dreaming City engrams give you a slightly <laughs> higher light boost than your other powerful engram. Every time it's like, oh shit! Everyone's got an amazing retold tale. I need an energy shotgun with maximum range. That looks beautiful. Let me go get one. Oh, I got three tiger spites. Never mind. Why did I spend two hours doing this? So I'm going to play Crucible. I'm going to play some Gambit. And I'm actually working towards slowly but surely that uh, the Vanguard Scout, the Pinnacle Scout, because it looks really good. But I'm not going to be day one, you know, getting that bread, as the people on Twitter say. So I can get to Max Light by playing those things. It'll just be marginally slower because I'm not going to just do all of my milestones. Fair enough. Okay, well, there's, um, let's be frank, there's a lot you're going to have to catch me up on. Let's start <laughs> off with these patch notes. Um, we see changes to weapons. We see some changes to, uh, well, plenty of the exotics, uh, Titan skating, uh, some other stuff. Uh, well, let's start with the Titan skating thing. Did yeah. you, ever, you ever do that thing to like get the macro set up and, and do the real quick, however that was? As a Titan main... I'm not even trying to like be a uh, boast fill or be on my high horse. I've never tried skating in destiny Two. I don't know why <laughs> probably out of laziness, honestly. Yeah. It's cause you have to like download a program or like a rebind or jump to scroll wheel. If you mm-hmm. want that method, uh, which keen claims still works like, I, but I've never tried it. I never cared. I was like, you know what? Someone else will do that. And I'm still going to be like, I, I don't know, like they'll reach me slightly sooner and I will try to shotgun them at that point versus me over there trying to shotgun them. Uh, it's absolutely powerful uh, if you know what you're doing with it, because I've played comp with guys who did it beautifully and, and are in position super, super fast. But I don't, you know, it wasn't that easy. Like, oh, if just click Titan and then uh, set up your macro and you're a god. Like you'll have not yeah. forgotten immediately. Uh, it was at least never that. Nevertheless, it was annoying and it's gone. There's definitely no skaters that are moving so fast they can actually die by impact against a wall. Because that was real and it was scary and it was stupid. It's kind of funny. Kind of funny. <laughs> it, was, it was, but it was, it got old. Well, according to these patch notes, it is now gone for e- well, no, not gone forever. Uh, they reduced the max speed that you can achieve with it, and yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's that's cool. I get yeah. This is one of those things where, um, you know, categorically, I don't have anything. I don't have an objection to people exploiting in-game mechanics as long as it's something where it's accessible to all players. Um, I mean, in Titan skating is one where you're not going to be Titan skating on a controller. Yeah. Or on a and, hunter or a warlock. <laughs> uh, for that matter. <laughs> and, you know, and it's not game breaking, right? Like if you're glitching like uh, in infinite super or something like that, that's just, I don't know how, but what the difference is there, but like, yeah, eh, I don't know. Versus like, I'm thinking of like, you know, reload canceling or something like that. That's that's like something built into the game, but I don't know. There's some other stuff where it's like, no, anyone can do that. You just learn the like input sequence or something. Um, Okay. Well, um, it's fair to say that you haven't seen uh, nearly as many Titan skaters zipping into walls at high speed. No, it's been pretty okay now. Cool. Uh, All right. Well, let's get into these patch changes. Um, I'm curious to know and this is always the interesting kind of delta of like, we read these things and go, oh, ha, ha, that's a thing. And then it feels like as often as not when you actually play it, you're like, oh, yeah, that's subtle. I wouldn't mm-hmm. I wouldn't really notice it. Um, but this shotgun one seems pretty interesting to me. And I'll say that my main shotgun uh, is a Dust Rock Blues with uh, 
well, you know, it's got a good roll in it, but it's got both assault mag and full auto, which I just find to be very fun. You still have a very solid range on it, um, but just being able to double tap if you need that cleanup or, um, you know, just playing Tixes, just play really aggressively, especially with those two perks. That was nice. And so I guess the first one I'm wondering, if you if you got a chance to feel it, that changed from full auto from 100% speed boost, so basically doubling your rate of fire down to just 10%. Have you, have you felt that? Yeah, yeah. I think actually everything on the shotguns has been very noticeable. The fire rate got changed on all of them, and you can feel it a little bit. Uh, it's not... At least with the ones I use in Crucible, it's not like the full auto or the slower rate of fire by 10 points or whatever is like losing me fights, you know, Mm -hmm. but I I use Parcel of Stardust in the the kinetic slot and that's a very, uh, it was a high rate of fire shotgun. It was not the full auto, uh, but I think it was 90 or something like that. Now it's 80 and I could tell like I wasn't getting easier second shots like when i missed my first one you just take one more and pretend like it was clean uh that that was not as easy and i definitely realized i was being a little over aggressive thinking i had tons of time to take two shots or or try to immediately follow up uh so that was noticeable but it wasn't like once i became aware of that i was still putting together very smooth very quick uh you know double kills and things like that uh, the range on shotguns is definitely noticeable. And the thing that made me notice it was I was using a not very good retold tail in the energy slot playing some comp. And mine has full choke, but it's only got light mag, threat detector, and grave robber. And threat detector, grave robber, it's not ideal, but you know it has its use in the crucible. So I've done fine with it. Before it has a range masterwork, so it gets up to 82, but it is not like the good retold tales you see. And I was just losing duels with it. Yeah. Absolutely. That's just tough because I mean, it was pretty obvious that the thing that really did stick out in the meta that they were going to have to address in the balance is shotguns, right? Not not because, mm-hmm. you know, they're ruining the crucible, but just because just it's good, right? Just because yeah, I mean, I mean, people are getting a large percentage of their kills with shotguns. Um, and yeah, okay. You can take all of the other clone range options and try and boost them up, but even still, you can't really compete with the zero time to kill of a shotgun shot that lands and all of the ways you sort of have to manage a shotgun of like restricting ammo, restricting rate of fire, reducing range, kind of none of them feel that good. If you've really embraced shotgun play. I definitely, that was always sort of a frustration for me when I'm used to my Dust Rock Blues and then switch to, you know, something else that is just that much slower and going, ooh, boy, this feels clunky. And it it does, you know, there's a skill component there, so it does force you to really pick the shot. You can't just unload the whole magazine and be like, oh, I got two kills with it. Um, But it also sounds at the same time like this change increased the max range you'll experience as a result of the quality of your role to a wider band. Like there were just a lot of ways to get to like nine meters before. Right, and it right. sounds like that's just not the case anymore. You really need a good one. And that's, I'm going to have to go back to that law sector and just make it happen. Uh, but I think like, honestly, I'm not not even trying to bullshit on this. I think it really does make them a higher skill weapon. Like not drastically, yeah. but I think what will win is someone with the fast reaction time and good aim. And you know, whether you're on a controller or keyboard and mouse, I mean, there are people who are good with shotguns. And so I don't think this is just a change and think like, okay, well shotguns are objectively worse now. I think shotguns are a little harder to use is how I would define it. Well, welcome to Crucible Radio, the show where we tell you how to use things slightly more effectively <laughs> when they're just not so easy mode anymore. Uh, anything else on shotguns or you want to tell me what's up with SMGs? SMGs are are still like I think no, nothing's perfect about them. I've heard on, I've heard on console they are still pretty uh, unwieldy. 
I think the SMG to go with is just the recluse. And that's why I'm going for it. Uh, I don't think they are suddenly like a top tier choice, but I think it's also one that some, that not a lot of people are going to pick up immediately. We had just discussed the undeniable pro of a uh, one zero time to kill shotgun. Uh, so I think maybe people will start rotating their loadouts around and getting different roles and things like that. But the, the recluse is absolutely uh, a monster. You can find good reviews on it from Cami or Drewski right now. They've already put theirs out on YouTube uh, and the, it looks amazing. It does 25 to the head or body when the perk is, when the perk is procced as we like to say, and it's just really good. And so I think that's the one that we'll see plenty of usage. Have we as a community yet decided if we're going to call it the recluse or the recluse? I don't even know (laughs) how I say it. I think I've said it differently each time. (laughs) Okay. I'm going to, let me just put it out right now. Is Uh, one way to say the spider versus the person? I feel like it's the same for both. Probably, right? That's a dumb question. But I I mean, yeah. Look, you know, there's there's lots of words that we're all learning or being reminded of by destiny, and you know, people, you know, you can say things how you want. Uh, that being said, I am Team Recluse, and I hope it catches on. I think that's how Childish Gambino says it in a song. He says, "Brown well, Recluse." There, hey, we're in good company. Yeah, people, people don't mess it up when it comes to the spider. We're clear about the spider. I don't know why, but in my head, if I said someone is being a, I would say, "Oh, they're being a recluse." Uh, you could call someone reclusive. Right. Okay. So that's why reclusive. Yeah. That, yeah, no, there's, okay. There's definitely, but they're the being a recluse. recluse. Um, we're just going to have to look this up. Damn it. Uh, recluse pronunciation. Uh, it appears they are both acceptable. Recluse. Recluse. Yeah, fuck that robot voice. Uh, both Recluse. are acceptable. <laughs> Recluse. <laughs> how'd, you, how'd you make it do that? Uh, it's easier yeah, it than good. you think. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty Just good. Google pronunciation, and it's the like function right below it, and it has a slow button for some reason. Moving on. Moving right along. Oh, and and that that's cool. I I hope um. I don't think SMGs need to dominate or that you need to like, you're expected to have one in your loadout like you did in year one or a good chunk of it. Um, And yeah, it seems like the bigger part of it was just making some space with shotgun changes. So if they're back in it, you start seeing them again. That's cool. That's cool. Um, Recluse. (laughs) (laughs) It's like the button says slow, but the voice is like and more annoyed. (laughs) Like, yeah. like they're re- like, how do you pronounce it? Recluse, recluse. No, how do you pronounce it? Recluse. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Well, don't don't make the Google, don't make Google angry, man. Um. All right. Well, and then we've got this last round of changes. I swear to God, if you press that recluse <laughs> I'm one not more time, do I swear it. to God. Um, the last round of weapon changes. I think I'm interested in are all power slot. I guess the first one is cluster bomb on rockets. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Birds. please, please. <laughs> Birds. That's, that's, okay, that's I. Uh, that's funny. Please call me Swain. <laughs> um, look, I, yeah, I would say I was probably running a rocket launcher in PvP twenty percent of the time, maybe. And if I was, it was usually Wardcliff, but. Cluster bomb is nice in sixes, certain modes. It sure is nice to be able to just like drop one of them on a capture point and see what happens. Mm -hmm. But yeah, big change. They really pulled that in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know if it'll like change the usage because I think like the beauty of a rocket launcher and crucible is you just fucking put it on their face and it's going to blow up and like you might even explode from it, but it's not about you know, gone are the days of those care- careful trust and Gallahorn aiming, you know, like bank it around walls and things like that. It's just like jump up in the air and put it straight out in the ground. So those who use it will use it. Um, but yeah, a note on rocket launchers. This is probably more PVE, but the Wardcliff got this absurd buff. It's it, it just deletes anything. 
we were running nightfalls on the Nocris one or just regular strikes. And it's literally just like, just use a ward cliff and it disappears in a se- in seconds, in one second. It's the, I don't know if they meant to do that. It's too strong, <sighs> but it's well, the delete the, button. They, they, they boosted some stuff up like Acreus and PV became something of a, Oh yeah, button. no, like there's yeah. some good stuff, but Wordcliff is all you need. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, good oh, to know. Let's 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 go to this one because I still play Titan and I still use this. The one-eyed mask officially got nerfed. Everyone was waiting for it. Everyone wanted it. Yeah, I th- love this it. is a. Uh, I think they also bumped uh, the drop rate for birds to get one-eyed mask in conjunction with this change. <laughs> And I'm going to be talking in, in a month maybe about, uh, you guys, it's actually still pretty good. And everyone going, yeah, you had, you had just no idea. Um, <laughs> I'll talk about it that it is still pretty good right now. I think okay. what it, it does what it does, and it is a, a solid choice. I ran a little quick play today just to get some games in with uh, you know the uh, Syntheseps. And I was like, okay, yeah, I, I miss it a little bit because the timer went down on the tracker. 15 seconds was silly. There's what's the Mar the Mars map with it's it's in, it has countdown and there's inside and outside. But I saw I was shooting someone inside. I tagged them with one eyed. They ran all the way around, all the way around, <laughs> all the way around. They put, peeked their head out. I sniped them and I killed them. They literally ran around 50 percent of the map. And I watched them do it. And I called out to my team and I said, okay, he's coming over here. Here he is. All right, there he is. It was silly. 15 seconds was absurd. Uh, eight seconds is still long enough for you to make a play, for you to give it, uh, information to your team in a comp setting like that, and for you to decide to target a player to get that health regen back versus shooting the other guy that you don't have tagged at the time. And the health regen sort of how I thought it would have worked all the, all along yeah. because now it's more in line with other healing uh, abilities or supers that have healing abilities uh, or exotic. Sorry. You get your kill, your health starts to regen, your overshield starts to develop. You got about maybe one Mississippi, one Mississippi and a half and you're back up to full strength. Uh, so at the very least you can't just, immediately go for the next guy. You can't be under fire by three people and instantly back be back up to 200 plus health right away. That was very strong. It made it absolutely dominant. Uh, now you just got to play it a little smarter, but it's it's absolutely amazing to still get your health and an overshield on a kill. No yeah, matter well, what, that will never go away. The super, having it not using super, that's rough because mm. you rely on it a little bit. And, uh, that's all right though. It's, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Well, I mean, this was the same type of change they made to a uh, worm husk, which was mm-hmm. a nice and spicy one. And now is a, uh, tasteful addition to a dish without overpowering it. Um, and yeah, eight, eight seconds in destiny time, eight seconds is still a lot of time. That's a, yeah. Hey, you know what? Thank you, Destiny, for making us really appreciate every passing moment. I can't believe <laughs> at the age of 34, I'm 34 now, um, that at the age of 34, I've really come to appreciate just how long eight seconds can be. You've stopped saying it's lit and you're looking at the small things. You're really yeah. growing up. I, I Now I just call things uh, good. It's oh, good. So it's great. old. Yeah. Um. Otherwise, yeah, there's a, I think the machine gun ammo nerf, I think actually the more noticeable change uh, happened in the patch before this, and you just can't go on a domination tear with uh, Thunderlord quite as easily. But if you use good rolls and you use it well, machine guns are still my favorite choice. Like I have Rampage on my hammerhead, and that will reduce the amount of bullets I need for kills <laughs> if I get them fast enough. Uh, I need a new Rampage mod. Cause I put one on my breakneck and why did yeah. I do that? But um, maybe I'll delete it. Uh, but yeah, machine guns are still awesome. Thunderlord's still a great choice if you happen to not be running an exotic in the other slots. So machine guns are good. Yeah. I like Thunderlord. I like it's it. It's good. It's, it's Thunderlord's good. awesome. 
Yeah, right. you know what's interesting is that you really loved it from D1, and I kind of never got it. But in a D2 context, it, <laughs> it just, it makes it makes a it, lot of sense. I was really, uh, I was kind of late on it, honestly. I think I got it to drop early enough. I know I had it. And then for mm. some reason, I think it was some arc burn, Prison of Elders crap. I was like, I'll just use Thunderlord. And, uh, or maybe I got another one to drop. And I was like, wait, this is fun. But yeah, uh, it, I was kind of late to the party. So when it came back, I was very excited. And the new, the new actual Thunderbolt that comes down from the sky is just so fun. So getting kills with that is crazy, and it's a monster. It's very good. Yeah, yeah. tap the trigger. Um, all right. Well, we've we, there's still plenty to cover, but we should probably take a minute here to give a shout out to our sponsor this week. It's Casper. Casper mattresses. Look, Casper is a sleep brand that continues to revolutionize its line of products to create an exceptionally comfortable sleep experience, one night at a time. Which, um, I believe is actually the best way to sleep. One night at a time? You got it. I agree. Very smart. With three mattress models, you got the original Casper, the Wave, and the Essential. Casper mattresses are perfectly designed to soothe and cradle your natural geometry. Some of us, we got little bumps and curves. Yeah, yeah, we're just big old, big old sacks of <laughs> Big <potatoes>. old lumps. <laughs> Not to mention the breathable design helps you sleep cool and regulates your body temperature throughout the night and it's delivered right to your door in a small how do they do that sized box with free shipping and returns in the u.s and canada the best part is you can be sure of your purchase with casper's 100 night risk-free sleep on it trial because after all you spend one third of your life sleeping so it should be comfortable separated as of as we said one night at a time yes but one third overall yeah, you know, you can't batch it up. You really got to get into a habit with um, sleeping. Mm-hmm. Can't, it's not one and done. Bonesy, you know me. I um, I enjoy you sleep sci-fi. all all at the end of the week. Just two <laughs> days solid. <laughs> stay awake for five. Yep. Yeah, don't bother me. Um, <laughs> yeah, just set an alarm for seventy two hours from now. Yeah. Hope your phone um, doesn't die. Yeah. <laughs> I think I have a charger. Call back. Um, no, man. I I I enjoy sci fi. I. I like to I like to read sci-fi books. I like to watch sci-fi TV shows. And you want to know, I think one thing a hundred years from now that might be nice is that we'll have the experience of saying, you know what? It's a lot easier to get a good night's sleep if you could just turn gravity down by 30%. Because gravity ain't a joke, man. Hmm. Gravity's tugging on you day in and day out. And when you're sleeping, you, yeah, sure, you're horizontal, but you you notice it. More so, and it's it's so important to have a mattress that is gonna gonna help you fight that fight that devil gravity and uh, stay comfy, right? You gotta you gotta cradle the potatoes. Get fifty dollars towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash crucible and using crucible, crucible at crucible. checkout. That's casper.com slash crucible. crucible. Offer code C R U C I B L E for fifty dollars off your first mattress purchase. Terms and conditions apply. Gravity is the devil. Thanks, Casper. Okay. 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 So this is the stuff I did not get to play this week. And honestly, I mean, just working continuously all week, I wasn't even catching up on the chat about, about this. So you really get to walk me in to the season of The Drifter. I mean, I, yeah, I, I'm thinking like, okay, that's Gambit Prime and there's a, 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 a Reckoning and some other stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, no spoilers, but yeah, walk, walk me through it. Well, I mean, the loop is similar to black armor. You can see the pattern they're sort of creating here. Uh, there's activities to do and you can get a certain reward from it. Uh, oh, by and by, I think competitive falls into one of the seasonal activities now because of the pinnacle weapons. Like I just think competitive gambit forges, whatever. I think it's on the list. Um, so the, but the glory has been doubled, which goes for wins and losses. So the time actually spent is a little lower, weirdly enough. It's kind of feels sad to get like 80 points down when you lose, but you get it right back. So that's one of the, that's one of the activities right now, I think. And as far as the, the new one, uh, like I've mentioned before, I think the loop is, uh, surprisingly very similar to the forges. So Gambit Prime, at least on its own, is a pretty new activity. It's a nice change up from Gambit. And there are now two different playlists. 
in case you haven't actually looked at it, uh, which is cool because you can go play Gambit. And of course, it's got the new sudden death feature, which I actually just experienced today for the first time. If it goes to round three, it's just an all out battle uh, to melt the primeval. And unfortunately, I just decided to go for the invade. I got three kills and my team just didn't do any damage to the primeval. So the other team just rest and melted it. Uh, but I don't know what they were doing. But it's kind of exciting because it's like the, the previous setup was so long. And you know, like, you know what's going to happen when you're standing there in the, the waiting room. You know, you're like, oh, we just got to go do this. There's no like, which side do I have to run to? And they give you your super and everything. So it, it's pretty cool. And you got to just tune your load out to that. So I liked that change. So what's up with this? Uh, like they got the rolls now. They got like the four different things and the special armor. How does that fit into it? Yeah. So that's the prime reckoning loop. When you go play Gambit Prime, there's bounties, there's end game rewards. There's all sorts of ways to get these uh, tokens or uh, items, whatever. And those items relate to those four classes, Collector, Reaper, Sentry, and Invader. And over the course of three games, I got you know, one or two of each. So, and I had a little bit more of Invader than I did Reaper, uh, but there are a couple bounties where you can specifically go for that Reaper token or whatever it's called. Uh, so that that is pretty clear. You sort of just get stuff by playing, but also you can slowly but surely target the builds you want. So then you play Gambit Prime, which again, great activity, little different. You've got a uh, hundred moats to bank. You just do it once. Then you've got this uh, rotation where you've got to take down the envoys before you can damage the primeval, but you get a damage boost after the envoys. It's cool. A lot of invading and uh, it, great with the team because there is a lot of invading and they don't just come from three points anymore. So you have to, it's, it's almost a little scary. Like I realized I don't know where this invader is and don't know where to look. So you got to be on your toes. Uh, but you win Gambit Prime, you get your stuff. Then you go to the Reckoning. The Reckoning is in that, that ball of stuff that the Drifter has been pulling around his ship. I don't fully understand the lore, but you go into I that. it was like <laughs> moving or something. It was like a U. Okay, yeah. You, yeah, you get in the little launch area. It shoots you out towards that. And then suddenly you're in the Nines realm, sort of where the spire was at the end of trials, Mm -hmm. very similar to that. And there is another bank just like where you put moats and you using those items from Sentry, reaper, what have you, uh, you can put them into your little machine, uh, (laughs) like furnace. I don't even know. And you just put that into the, for example, if you're doing tier one, put it in the weak slot and you can get one piece of gear from that. So I take reaper item, put it in my little furnace thing. I dump it into that bank. It's self-explanatory once you're there. And I go do tier one of reckoning. Now reckoning is where it's literally just a forge. Pretty standard PVE encounter, at least in the the lowest point. Battle some enemies. A big guy will show up, kill the big guy before the timer runs out. It's quite literally a forge. Uh, Then you go back out, you collect your loot, and you will have an armor piece from that set. So that's where the sets come in. And there is actually different sets for each class. I don't fully love this because it's just so much stuff. Like it's, I don't have enough armor slots. Uh, So you just have to choose unless you want to do a ton of vault management. But there is a full armor set for Invader, a full armor set for Reaper, etc. So you can have four different helmets if you want to get all four rolls. Mm-hmm. So then it just comes down to hoping you get a decent roll on said piece of gear. Uh, the plus side is you're not messing around with like, uh, it's not actually chroma. You don't have to change the color on the armor. You right. don't have to, <laughs> it's not RNG based. So you just use chroma until you get the right color or whatever. Uh, you just get it. And so that's nice. So if you get, do four reckonings, you'll get four pieces of gear. As long as you put in the right color at the start, you'll get that armor set and hopefully it drops you the stuff you need. Uh, so, and okay. And then the armor gives you a, a boost for when you're doing that type of thing. When you get the full set, you put on the full set, you'll get those perks. And then you head back into Gambit prime where those perks uh, are, are applied. So we're not going to see that for a while. 
actually until people are really getting these full sets. And there's plenty of people on Twitter. Obviously, they've they've got it all. But I'm talking about the meta of Gambit Prime. That won't be there until more people have full sets. And then you got to actually discuss with your team, like, who's running what. You can have four invaders. There's no rules against that, but you're not you're not taking the full advantage of all the benefits. You know, that's never really been a destiny thing that there's this idea that there are fixed uh, definitive roles for yeah. what a team is going to do, which is not to say, look, you know, if you're going into comp or you're, you're going into, I mean, certainly a raid, you know, you're thinking about what subclasses you're using. You're thinking about your loadout and how that synergizes with your team. A lot of it just hooks into your play style, but there's definitely times where it's like, all right, well, we're going to need uh, one bubble at least. Who's going to do bubble? Um, but it's always been a much blurrier line than that. And that's always been cool, right? There's other games out there where, no, it is very explicit. Like, this is the blank character. And if I play as this character, you don't get to play as this character. You have to do something else. I mean, yeah, lots of games where that's the case. You need character, selector, screen, take your pick. Um, and so I'm curious to see how Gambit Prime ham- handles that. One thing I have to assume is that they've been... I don't want to say worried about, but certainly taking into consideration what sort of happened uh, the first time around with Gambit, which is that you just see this big gulf start to form between what a coordinated team is able to accomplish Mm -hmm. versus what happens when you, you know, solo queue in and you just get randos. Because I can imagine once, you know, once it kind of shakes out, there's going to be one or two of those roles that are really kind of the one that people like. Like you're going to see a lot of people with their invader armor set. You're going to see, um, yeah, I'm just guessing like the moat guy is probably not going to rank up there too highly. That's <laughs> um, it's the kind of thing where if there was, you know, competition for who gets to be the one to invade in solo queue now, it's only going to be more pronounced when it's like, no, I've got the armor. Oh my God. You can't believe you just took that. Right. Like I was supposed yeah. to do that. Yeah. We'll, we'll see something shake out and, and decide really what the, the final thing is. But I do think this is going to be, uh, there will be some sort of meta versus PVE just being a solvable activity. And, sure. and like, that's been the reality. Even, Raids give you roles, but it is a solvable thing. You can have mm-hmm. faster methods or whatever. Uh, but I want to see if this changes, and I think it will. Because if you go into uh, Gambit and everyone wants to invade or Gambit Prime, then you're, I don't know, you you actually are sacrificing some other benefits that your, op, uh, your opposition might be using. So I think it could work. Yeah, I, I do think that just like comp, uh, there's going to be, there's, there's like a 90% chance there will be an invader with the red armor on the other team. Like mm-hmm. that's probably going to be the case, but will it be a benefit to have two centuries? Will one reaper actually be good? Is two reapers really good at getting a hundred moats really fast? I think that's where we'll see slight, slight changes. And that's really good for the mode. There's definitely a trade-off you make too, where, you know, with original gambit, it can be, but by the end, you know, there's sort of a one-size-fits-all solution. You see some variation in loadout or play style, but really either you're doing the thing that everyone just knows to do at this point and is kind of the same for everyone with the exception of who's going to be the one to invade versus something where there really is some depth, there's some complexity, maybe there's no right solution. So let me be clear, like, that's a good thing. That's a good mm-hmm. thing, right? That you can, that we've got a game mode now where, there's not going to be just this race and then sort of stagnation at the one size fits all solution. That's cool. We can acknowledge the downside that as we collectively start to figure out all of the different ways to do it, it's going to make playing with randos that much more frustrating because it's (laughs) like, Oh, you don't even know to like, Oh, you don't even know to like not, not invade quite yet until we, you know, until we, see that they've summoned the primeval or whatever, it's going to be much more fundamental of like, yeah, oh, you just don't understand these mechanics. They're more complex. It add depth, but um, yeah, not people st- still going to be figuring it out for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the downside, but it might just be like high level crucible. It's like go in with a team or know that you're handicapping yourself, you know, like that's mm-hmm. just the way it is, but that's the way it is. Those PVE kids got to learn that too. Yep. 
Well, hey, we're 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 all learning. Well, so I mean, I guess in terms of um the the rest of the season that we've seen so far, there's there's still more to come, right? Like we don't mm-hmm. have Thorn Quest yet. There's I'm just looking at this image. There's there's some other other stuff coming. We've got new maps, all that. So time to figure that out. But anything else specifically related to this season of The Drifter that jumps out at you? Uh, I do think that the Gambit Prime weapon set is fucking cool. Like, like these Destiny artists just make me want things because the art is incredible and the way they look is awesome. I got the Soul Survivor, which is the sniper from my first like powerful drop or whatever. And I was like, damn, I love having this. Uh, but... That being said, I do think a few of them are good to pursue. There's a few that I'm just going to assume will be fine for your collections. You know, like you don't have to grind for the sword. Uh, But there's a new 150 kinetic hand cannon, uh, something that hasn't been around since like Dire Promise, which people still used deep into Forsaken. So there's some good perk rolls to be had on that. I think that's a worthwhile gun to have. Uh, the shotgun is an aggressive frame in the energy slot. It's nice to know that there's more than just doing that one nightfall for mind benders. If you want one of those same rules still apply. And uh, the sniper, I, I think the sniper is pretty good. It's a uh, 90 RPM. So it's energy fake cry is foul, uh, but I've got opening shot on it. It looks really good. I don't like fate cries foul or the sound of it. So I'd love to get a good roll on this. And uh, there's, I, I don't know them off the top, so, and we're not the source for this, but there's a few ways you can get the uh, masterworked versions of these in Gambit Prime. Like, I believe Pope Bear tweeted that he just killed a high value target and the SMG dropped, which is pretty cool. So, at least you can get them in one or two different ways. It's still going to be a grind loop, no doubt about it. Uh, but, Gambit's the name of the, th- the name of the game right now, so might as yep. well get some stuff. Well, and it's it is it is a still a big RNG grind loop, right? Like, yeah, it really you're not is. gonna have too much luck saying, "Ooh, I'm gonna get this sniper rifle, so I'm gonna do X." You're gonna have to do X, and uh, maybe when you get a thing, it'll be the sniper rifle. Um, and that's, yeah. yeah, that's okay. Maybe that's how um, I got my really good parcel of stardust that I've not gotten uh, ever again. So. Just got to happen to get a good roll. Get this out of the way. Starcel of Pardust. I don't know why I needed to say that. Okay, um, whatever. Yeah, it's it's not great. Um, So we've also got some new exotics in Season of the Drifter. Uh, of course, there is. There is that old thorn, that old thorn of ours. But we also have a new uh, class-specific armor exotic uh, for, for each of you hunters, titans, and warlocks. Um, and some new weapons as well. What do you, what do you into these? The new weapon being like the linear fusion thing. I don't even know. It sounds interesting. It's kinetic. That's kind of wild. But yeah, I don't even know how we get that. I'm sure it's like tier four reckoning or whatever. So we'll see what happens to it. But yeah, I don't I don't know. It sounds cool. Yeah. I, I It's been interesting to see people have been very one way or the other with how it looks. I like certainly it's unique and like, points to destiny gun designers it's a unique looking gun um but uh yeah in terms of like oh my god it's beautiful i want it or like uh uh, i guess we'll wait and see yeah it seems like a pretty pretty hard split there yeah so i don't have any of these yet who knows when they'll drop but there's one for each the titans have stronghold i've seen this in action dan got a clip of it it's pretty funny uh, but the perk is called clenched fist and guardians with or guarding with swords increases movement speed and does not drain ammo shots blocked immediately after guarding will heal you. So picture a Titan skipping around the EDZ holding his <laughs> sword out, <laughs> just blocking all any and all damage for as long as they want. Uh, how that will play in PVP. Who's to say uh, hunters get the liars handshake, which looks really cool. It's like the assassin's creed knife but for hunters <laughs> and it's uh the the perk is cross counter using your arc melee ability or being hit by a melee attack will allow you to follow up with an extremely powerful melee counter punch that will heal you that's pretty cool that's like some d1 blade dancer stuff 
Uh, I really want to get these and, and try them out. Uh, Warlocks look look fun too. It's the getaway artist and the perk is called Dynamic Duo. And you hold your arc grenade to convert it into a supercharged arc soul. The arc soul functions as an autonomous turret. That's fun. <laughs> I have not seen that one yet, but it looks, it sounds so fun. So there's like, you know, your utility exotics. Like what's... um. What's a good example? Um, hey, knucklehead radar. There's an example, right? Yeah. Like it's Ophidian just, aspect, just reload fast. Exactly, right? Like pretty much no matter what your play style is, how you're using it, you're just receiving this constant passive benef- benefit, and that's why you chose that exotic. And we've got a nice selection of those, right? You know, you got your your frosties. You know, if your gameplay mm-hmm. style involves sprinting, that's going to be a real helpful one for you. Um, but then on the other side, you have your... Well, what do you call them? Your niche exotics or your sort of gameplay dependent exotics. And these all sound specifically like that. These are all introducing or buffing very specific mechanics where if you aren't playing that play style, these are useless to you. Yep. But if you are playing that play style, it's just a whole new thing that was in the game that wasn't there before. And considering the selection of exotics we have right now to begin with, I'm glad that's the direction they went with these. Yeah, I mean, I I always want just like some amazing, perfect passive ability, like I mean, of course, Ophidian right. aspects. It's great to have that, but I'm also definitely down for some playstyle changeups. Like if I get arms that make me want to play, uh, like Arc Hunter, cool. Because I don't know if I would just go pick that any other day. So I'm down for for these kind of changes for sure. A uh, couple ones like that right now. Like I think, especially with the one eyed nerf. Heart of Inmost Light might have some more, see some more action. It's very niche right now, but Titans who use it are good with it because all you have to do is pop your barricade before you head in and then your sticky grenade can one shot. Your lightning grenades are huge damage and stuff like that. So I think those niche ones will have more room if stuff like One-Eyed isn't just like the go-to, put it on no matter what. So that's good. It's good for the game. Uh, I mean, with those, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Um, I guess kind of switching gears, and you had mentioned this earlier. I mean, hey, you're back in it now, and you're back in it with some comp. And the comp yeah. playlist, you know, for at least this last season, right, like, hadn't changed a ton. You know, we've got some new pinnacle weapons to grind towards. We've got, however you want to phrase it, you, you know, the the light grind is cut in half. Um I mean, I guess that's the effect of doubling wins and losses. Um, but the playlist is the playlist. And even without, you know, some mechanics or balancing changes, it can still evolve over time. Um, what's been your impression of Comp? Well, so far, I'm at about 900 glory. I think I was 950 or 980 or whatever and ended the night on a loss or whatever. But so I've played enough to get there. Uh, it is nice knowing I can get there a little faster with those points. Uh, but otherwise, like it's, I think the honestly, sandbox is really strong. Uh, there's gonna be teams that go in with four uh, night stalkers who think they're just picking the obvious choice and gonna roll through with obvious meta picks, but it's not true. Like that doesn't make the team good. Uh, I saw a team that was four uh, dawn blades, and they did, they dominated. It was amazing. Like, we were like, wow, this is a really effective choice here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the super choice is definitely, it's it's going to be people using what they're good with. Um, the shotgun thing, that's where I felt it because my shots mattered. It wasn't just quick play, hoping to just try to find a triple kill or something like that. I had to make my shots and I realized like I need to focus and aim here. And the call outs are important as always. Uh, the one thing that, you know, you're starting to see some people tweet about is the super mods because the competitive choice is to put five super mods on your guardian so that you get your super as fast as possible because the choice now is roaming supers. Uh, it used to be even back in uh, the beginning of D2 or in D1 where there was just less types of supers all over the field that a single shutdown super could be a great choice on your team. And it used to be that you could be the last man standing 
and pop your super and make a huge play because you were a little hard to kill and you had a lot of movement or whatever. Like I remember just popping Storm the second I was the last player alive because I'll just go make something happen. It's not really the move anymore. You shouldn't be popping your super if you're the last person alive. That's a bad idea now. So the play is to get your super fast, use a roaming super and push with it. If you can do that, you're off to the races because then you can drop orbs for your team. And the five super mods definitely make that the dominating uh, dominant choice right now. So it's all about managing that and making sure to be aware of that, especially in the round based ones. Like just don't go run into the middle if you know they got their Dawn blade mm, up or something. Yeah. But overall, it's it's okay. It plays fine. I like it. I like the strategy of comp games. I love the call outs. And uh, honestly, after playing Apex, I really wanted to ping stuff, but I realized I had to use my words way more often. <laughs> and that was good practice. Uh, you know, maybe maybe three years from now, everything is going to have ping built into it, and that's probably just the new normal. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's it sounds like comp, right? And you know, I think we've. We've talked about it a bit on the show. We've talked about it, you know, on Twitter or whatever. But the, I mean, it's certainly no secret that I think a lot of people were disappointed that Trials was not coming back this season. And maybe just more in general that this is the, I, it, it is the season of the Drifter. There's there's some stuff for sure across the board, but it's really focused on Let's keep Gambit going, right? People are burnt out on Gambit. Let's let's have that be the next priority. And um, yeah, you know, there's a limit to how much you can do in a given season. They made a call for what to prioritize over yep. uh, old Bungie HQ, and you know, it, it, it is what it is, right? Um, I I you know to see Trials come back would have been cool for me. It wouldn't have been like the make it or break it. No, you know, I'll check out this Gambit Prime thing, but. Well, you had a thread on Twitter the other day while you were desperately trying to kill time before going to see Captain Marvel, <laughs> um, where you, you you were ranting a bit about D2. And it's in something that we've not, let's put it this way, not really our brand. Um, yeah. But you, I thought you were pretty, you were pretty honest, you were pretty fair. And um, I agreed with pretty much everything you said in there. But I think the thing that really jumped out to me is this shift that we've seen that maybe we're the odd ones out on it because like kind of underlying a lot of the changes of destiny Two, especially coming from that, that year one is that there was a big loud period and a lot of it had to do with fixed roles or just sort of the content reset. But a lot of people saying unambiguously loudly, I want the hobby back. I want destiny as a lifestyle choice. I want there always to be something to do. I used to be addicted to this. I want the addiction back. Why would I play it anymore? And that that was said something said pretty loud and yeah. something that um, just by popular demand was sort of embraced. Um, but uh there's a lot of concrete changes for how something like that plays out that are just not, um, not for me, I guess. Yeah. I, I mean, and I also said even before, I think it was before this season happened that the, uh, title system has been a bummer to me because I feel like I have put the time into this game. Like I want to be recognized as someone who's good at it and committed to it and stuff. And even those titles, I look at the ones I'm missing and I'm just like, no, like I'm not going to get that sidearm from Anna Bay at fucking Mars or whatever. Like that's, I no, I'm not going to grind for that to complete Wayfarer or whatever. I might get dredging three seasons later if I happen to play this Gambit Prime on a double infamy weekend or something like that. But like, it just sucks that I can't actually put something on my character without a truly absurd amount of time dedicated to it. The the thing that I have is not forgotten. And luckily I think that's the best option because it's a great weapon. Uh, and I've, I earned it myself and I earned it uh, fair and square and I use it all the time because it's strong <laughs> and that's awesome. But like I have no titles and the ones I'm missing, I'm just I couldn't, couldn't imagine putting the time in to do that. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind, of, it's kind of funny. Like there's this side where it's like, there's so much variable in the stuff you get now. Yeah. 
I joked about someone doing the math for me, but like birds, what if I told you I want to, I want to replace the chess piece on my Titan. I have the one uh, it's that works. It's, but it's ugly as hell, but I want it to have two points on recovery. I want it to have two points on resilience. I want it to have uh, in hand, a sniper rifle, unflinching and hand cannon reserves or whatever. I won't even, I won't care if it has arc resistance or whatever the masterwork perk is. Sure. Like what are my odds? Uh, give me just a sec. I will gladly do that math for you. Okay. Uh, let's just uh, let's just pick a piece. I'm going to assume that you are okay with uh, any piece of Titan chest armor, regardless <laughs> of what it looks like. All right. So let's see. So we've got the three different stat rolls. So I'll start with that. Um, and then you wanted basically a specific per- perk from each. Yeah, like I want to use it for my new sniper loadout and the last word. How about that? 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Uh, we've got these. One, two, three. Um, okay, so this is for... Um, this is for a default piece of Titan armor. So it doesn't have access to the enhanced perks. So we're just, we're just excluding that entirely. Um, and you're really going for that specific role of, okay, you want the, the sniper unflinching. Uh, okay. So for one of those to get the specific piece that you want, that's going to be, I believe, maybe I'm oversimplifying, but a one in 513 chance what that fuck? you'll get that piece. Um, See, we we find, uh, you, you know, we find that that um, you're going to get a lot of pieces, and maybe you could, if you, you know, you get that sniper unflinching that you need. Um, although, good fucking luck getting the enhanced uh, unflinching sniper, and that's going to be, I'm sure, well well into the thousands. Um, that maybe on that second perk, you know, you can play around with your reserves a little bit, um, or, you know, you're okay with just special ammo finder or whatever. And this um, is implying a hel- a chest piece drops and not like a helmet or an arms or a gun. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that you're looking at hundreds of chess pieces dropping before you find the role that you want. And that's just for the chess. Just and that's your- in between h- thousands of other drops. Yeah. Yes. And just for your hunt or j- sorry, just for your Titan to be clear. Yes. Okay. Do some other characters. Um, and you know what? That is uh, a great way to make sure that people never run out of things to chase. Oh, that's uh, a pretty it, well, good no, point. Sorry, 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 sorry. It is a way. <laughs> it is sure. a way. Um, you know, that, I think- yeah, that's it, right? That's it's a way, and it's not the way I really wanted. And you know what? That's the thing is like I was cool with it when Forsaken dropped. I played I played hundreds of hours of Forsaken. Yeah, it was awesome. There's stuff to do. There's new places. There's new gear. I did it all. I liked the random rolls again. I was like, fine. I got a cool drop. I'm excited for this one drop. I get it. That's the little boost I get. But like. Then the next expansion hit and then all my gear was useless for a little while. And then I was wearing the same stuff because it was like two pieces of new armor. It, I ran out of steam and that's what it is. I just ran out of steam. Yeah. There's, I mean, one thing in particular that is, um, I'm just going to be salty about it. It, it, it makes me upset that the feature to be able to, you know, spend some, some cores, whatever, spend, spend something, but be able to re-roll the stat package on your armor. That to me was something that was just like, okay, great. Right. Like it looks the way I like, I've got this, um, you know, I don't get it for free. I still have a, a scarce resource and I've got to grind it, but I can, all of the time that I put in translates towards getting closer to that loadout, that loadout. I like to make loadouts. It's, part of the appeal for the game for me. And the thing is, is that we know that like they have that tech in the game, right? Like <laughs> it was already there. <laughs> yeah, it was there and that they took it away as part of the random rolls. So, okay, it became fixed again. That was a big change. But now that the solution that they chose was, and you know, like, I don't want to say like, what's well, the community's fault? Cause it's not, but that they realized, well, we could put that back in. People might like that. Um, and then they realized, no, we could triple the 
possible grind, uh, the purely random grind that makes sure that people will always be at that, you know, they'll be at that 90% spot of like, oh, I've got my loadout perfect. I accept I need to probably, I'm probably have to spend another five weeks or so grinding on the Titan to get that, that one chess piece that I need. And to me, it's just, it's just not fun. Um, and I get a sense too that there's been, you know, when you play the Crucible a lot, and I think when we look back over doing this show, what I've realized is that every Crucible game I've played has made me a better player. A lot of them were just for fun. I wasn't in try hard mode or like going down my checklist of make sure to work on this or here's, you know, my goal, whatever. But that we have progression that's that's like real and kind of intangible, but it's real over time. You Mm -hmm. build skills and you learn strategy and every game that you've played is now a game in the bank of experience that makes you better. And that remains true, I think. But when it comes to gear, the hundreds or thousands of hours you put in year one Destiny, completely irrelevant. The hundreds and hundreds of hours that you know, you've put in, in previous seasons, except for maybe the most recent, no longer relevant. The thing that counts when it comes to D2 is how much time have you put into this season because it doesn't matter if you ever max your light out. If you don't max it out again next season, good luck. If, you mm-hmm. know, when the new hotness comes along or the change to the way armor works such that all the new pieces are just better than all the old pieces, which is fine. But that is that is the checkpoint. You don't get to, you don't get a coast on saying, hey, I've really spent a lot of time building up this account, um, you know you're welcome to use year one armor or to use fixed roll guns. Um, but you're definitely, you're definitely not in the same place. Um, and that that's even season from season to season. That's, that's a tough pill for me to swallow. Yeah, I get it. I mean, yeah, it's, it's enough that, you know, just did the math. Like it's enough to know I need to temper my expectations and cause it's easy for me to dive in, you know, uh, there's a reason this game is addicting and it's uh, easy for me to just kind of fall back into that. But I've realized ahead of time, I don't want to, uh, to that degree. I want to play crucible with my friends and get the recluse, but, uh, the, the, the grind loop is, is too much. And I'm aware of that now. I think something that's been rattling around my head and um, I don't want to jump the gun on this, but it seems fitting given the content of this episode. I just want to say it that um, the reality is like in my life right now, I got other stuff going on, right? I am in the middle of a job hunt. Um, I've got, uh, you know, there's, there's just, there's just things outside of the gaming world. And even within the gaming world, I'm just not spending a ton of time playing video games. And the thought of jumping into destiny to play some largely familiar content is just not appealing for me right now. And I feel an obligation, you know, we do a show about it that I got to stay up on things, but at the same time, a couple of weeks back, I did an episode where I just talked to my friends and family about stuff that was really important to me in the moment. And that was pretty cool too. So yeah. I think um, we're going to have to figure this out. And this is something we'll, we'll continue to, to talk about because uh, <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to uh, leave you guys with a big check to write, but um, I, I'm not going anywhere, but I, I don't think I want to play this season of destiny. <laughs> Like, I don't like, I'll, ch- I'll check it out. I'll log in. I'm gonna play some Gambit Prime or whatever. But the idea of committing to staying on top of the Destiny grind this season, which means I'm gonna have to come up with like eight hours a week to put into Destiny, like mm-hmm. 20% of, of what my full time job takes already on a, on a light week. That's, that just doesn't seem right now. So. We'll have to figure that out, but I think this season of the Drifter, it's a, it's got a nice theme to it. It's cool. It makes sense. It's going to be great for a lot of people, and I want to see it. But I don't know. Uh, I'm probably going to hop in to do whatever I got to do to get Thorn, because like, Thorn's great. Thorn's great. But when it comes <laughs> to the big picture of committing to a season of content, um, 
Yeah, I'm going to sit this one out. Yeah, that's so reasonable. And I, I feel like a lot of PvP centric players are, you know, thinking about the same thing or wondering what they're going to do. And yeah, I, I mean, I don't blame you for a second. And I, and I feel half of that way all the time. Uh, it's weird, but I guess I think what I can hope for personally is that obviously we don't know everything about a season, just the second it drops and that black armory brought some surprises and they learned some things from the not so successful surprises and other things like that. I have to imagine they have something up their sleeve that we're going to see something uh, up here that isn't, uh, you know, on that graphic right now. I, we don't even know what that, uh, that spring event is going to include. And maybe they are hearing the, the, the cries for attention from PVP players and have something to, to appeal to them. I can hope for that. And obviously we're going to be right here. I'm going to play. I'm going to get that recluse for sure. And, uh, I'll be, I'll be ready when they, when they do. But, uh, yeah, I understand completely. Yep. Well, Hey, let's make one thing clear. Uh, the, the level of destiny, uh, birds analysis you might get this season is probably going to be, uh, a heck of a lot lower, but uh, hey, this podcast ain't going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. I'll pick up the slack. Don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> you're doing the. You. It's thankless work playing video games for fun. I uh, know it's rough. <laughs> These hobbies of mine. Yeah, hey, they weigh doing? on me. Well, thank you for listening to Crucible Radio. Uh, next week, wow, next week we might have all three of the boys <laughs> on the podcast at the same time. Or I might just say thing. I'm gone and you guys can't even do anything. <laughs> that would be fair. That would be fair. You know what? It was a real attitude adjustment for me the first time you were like, oh, I'm just getting back home from work. I'm so swamped right now. Can you guys go without me? And me just going like, you can do that? Oh, no, just like, oh, thanks a lot, buddy. Like, oh, okay, I guess fine. Don't make a habit of it. And now it's just like, I'm super okay. I was like, yeah, man, take that night yeah. off. We Because we've it. all hit that moment. We And Swain hit it too. He's like, I've worked 12 hours for the last 12 days. We're like, dude, go yeah, to sleep. Yeah. Uh, Stop. <laughs> yeah. I'll, 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 I'll try and carry that Swain torch for a week by mistaking myself for Swain and then realizing all the ways in which You're I'm just getting into the character. I'm just getting into the character. I'm just bracing it. Okay. All right, I need to stop talking before my go voice goes away in particular. I hope you enjoyed this super sultry baritone birds this week. Uh, but uh, yeah, hey, let's let's wrap it up. Um, if you enjoy us talking and you think, man, I want some more of those boys each and every month, even more than a month, you're not getting enough, go to patreon.com slash crucible radio. Listen to our bonus podcast. It's a fun one. And we'll talk about some real shit on there too. Uh, it's only a dollar an episode, and uh, your support goes, uh, be pretty frank, doesn't go to us. Goes to engineer Andrew, goes to video editor Nick. It helps make this show possible. Um, so, uh, yeah, tell them that you love me, you like how crispy this podcast sounds, and uh, enjoy some free podcast content while you're there. Goodbye. Good trick. <laughs> Thank you.
Hello everyone, Swain here. You know that Crucible Radio is your source for all things Destiny PvP, and I know you want more than just this video, so make sure to head on over to crucibleradio.com to find all of our past episodes, detailed Crucible maps, t-shirts, and much, much more.